Hello, OK friends. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching my video, my channel is all about orchids. From what orchids I have, how I grow them, my thoughts on certain orchid topics, to what orchids in my collection are blooming, etc. So if you want to follow along my orchid hobby adventure, please consider subscribing to my channel and turn on the notification. Today in this video, we're going to look at my mini Phalaenopsis orchid. This one is technically a no ID from my grocery store, from my local grocery store. However, this one could be the Jaiho Pink Girl because it didn't came, it didn't come with a tag. So I can't really say this is the Jaiho Pink Girl, but it could very well be. And here is the story about this orchid's um, development and flowering from this year. So here are some photos from fall 2018 and that was the time that it started to produce the flower spike and at the time the the aerial roots were also really really growing strongly and then it was also putting out a new leaf at the same time so it was just doing all kinds of crazy, crazy things at the same time and pretty soon the flower spike continued to develop to a point where I realized wow it's gonna bloom and I was literally looking at this orchid taking a look at this orchid every single day so it took me a while but then in the middle I had to leave for a business trip and then there was that big temperature drop and then the next day went back up to a really really hot hot day so the first flower uh, the butt blasted it actually happened to quite quite a few other orchids too so they all had a little bit of minor butt blast due to the fact that I wasn't home to care for it to adjust the temperature and humidity. So the first flower opened missing two petals, two of its petals. Um, it's not typical but I've had other orchids do, do this. Um, sometimes I feel that they just want to grow up too quickly and they grow too fast that it just didn't have enough time to grow out the petals maybe. Um, in fact, I think this orchid last time when I bought it, the first two flowers also were missing the, their petals. And then the second bloom, as you can see here, has one petal. So it's an improvement from missing two petals completely. And now the third flower opened and now it, it you know it looks normal right you have three sepals and, and and two petals plus a lip so it's definitely on the right track <laughs> sometimes orchids they really do bloom with missing parts but that's just you know i don't have a good explanation for it but then i try to make fun of that this phenomenon by saying that they're just trying to be trying to grow up too quickly um, but back to this orchid's care i don't really well, cause, because it doesn't have a name tag, but I think that this one has... This orchid should have Shilleriana and Zuma Pixie in its parentage. On the characteristics of the flower as well as the modeling um, on the leaves, I feel that this could very well be the Jaiho Pink Girl. However, I can't really say it is because it did not come with a tag. So it is a no ID, in my opinion. And thankfully, I have never been very caught up by the fact that orchids do not have names. I honestly don't really care as long as they're good bloomer, good performer, they earn, they will have a spot in my collection, on my growing rack. Oh, another thing about this orchid is it does not have any fragrance that I can easily detect. If I put my nose really close to the flowers, I can smell a little bit of scent. But my friends say that their Jaiho Pink Girls are scented, even though not very strong, but they don't have to put their nose up close at the flower. So maybe this isn't the Jaiho Pink Girl, but looks very much similar. In terms of care, because this orchid is in a clay pot in a, and with media that's a mixture of sphagnum moss and bark chips. So usually that wet dry cycle is about seven days in my environment. And because the clay pot is very, very por porous, 
So what I've always been doing in terms of watering is I will water, I will pour water on top of the moss and let the water go into the cup really quickly until it fills up, until water is, is just slightly overflowing, then I stop. And then I let the water gradually go down and then because outside there is this tiny little 8 ounce container I use that as a saucer but then I also use that cup to soak this orchid whenever I water this orchid so I just let the water sit in that uh, plastic cup for half an hour right while I water other orchids and typically that's enough time for the entire media to be completely saturated. So then I would then take out this orc and let it drain until there's no water dripping out of the bottom drainage hole. And that's when I that that's when I know okay I can put it back to where it is and 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 leave it be for another seven days in summertime. And it, it would be 14 days, about two weeks or so in winter time. So so that I gives this orc a very, very distinctive wet dry cycle. Fertilizer, I always use quarter strength for my mini Phalaenopsis orchid, even though they they I think they can go I can go up to 50% with these mini fowls and they should be okay still. But I you know, I just want to mix one type of fertilizer strength and, and use it on all my orchids because I'm lazy. I don't want to have to play around with too many different kinds of strength and concentration um, just for a few orchids. I, I personally don't think it's worth my time doing. Um, but that's just my opinion, right? If you have fewer orchids and if you have more time, you know, you can be as specific as you deem fit. And I should probably also share some more background about the media mixture. At the time, this orchid was suffering from a little bit of root rot. So I knew I had to repot it and I did. And at the time, all I had was bark chips and sphagnum moss. This is when I was still living in New York. So at the time I didn't have um, the, the manto clay and the hydrocorn pebbles. So all I did was basically put this in a very, it, I try to create very aer aerated ratio. So the moss was never compacted, and inside of it there were bark chips. Might have been, there might have been a couple broken um, clay pot pieces that I threw in there just to make it really airy. And it's about two years ago now that this orchid was repotted. So. Probably in another a year or two. Probably I'll, being a lazy person as I am, right? As lazy as I am, I think I'll wait for another a year at least before I will even think about repotting this orchid. Plus, it's looking really good. It's growing really well. I really don't feel like I should up-pot it or unpot it just to see what's inside, right? If it's not broken, I'm not going to fix it. But there are two things that I think I will do differently for next year or this year after the flowers are fade away, fade, faded away. Number one, I think I will up the fertilizer to 50% with this one just to see if the leaf will grow bigger and whether the aerial roots or the root system will continue to improve and to also see if it would if the 50% fertilizer would increase the flower count or number of flower spikes that's number one so play around with the fertilizer and the second thing is next year i think if this orchid flowers i will stake the flower spike so that way the flower spike will grow up more versus this natural pendant because the way that i position this orchid is faced toward the window so the flower spike basically was growing toward the window at a very natural its own pendant angle in fact this year i did not i pretty much didn't put any stick to prop up the flower spike for any of my orchids so a lot of this year's orchid bloom videos you're gonna see that they all have their own natural um pendant kind of um, flower spike look and feel 
Overall, I'm pretty happy with this orchid's performance this year, this particular flowering cycle, and I'll keep you posted on how this orchid does going forward, and hopefully with the, the ratio, uh, fertilizer ratio, you know, we'll see some improvement for the next flowering cycle. This is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to get more orchid related videos from my channel, please subscribe and turn on the notification. I want to wish you happy growing and I will talk to you in my next video. Ciao!